Hi everyone. Um, as part of this video, or this presentation I've been putting together for the Revit Technology Conference coming up at the end of this month and in the US in the following month, um, one of the things I was, I've been fiddling around with is nesting structural families into other families and then loading them into the project. And one of the limitations I've found, for instance, with columns, but also true for all structural framing, is that even though I've constrained these nested, or here's my family that I've loaded into the project, and you can see I've set the columns to be shared, so I can tab select the individual columns. Um, but see how this one, if I look at the properties, it's been told to go from ground floor to level one, yet clearly it's not. And if I switch to th the actual family that I made, it is each of the columns have been told to go from the lower reference level to the upper reference level and they correctly behave when I move the level. Um, what they're actually doing is when I load it into the project they're defaulting to their original size so if we go and look into my column family which happens to be a UB you can see that the level to level height in this sample is two, two and a half meters and if I go to my project and put a dimension on here, we'll find that it's also two and a half meters. So what I've had to do is basically devi devise a workaround that will force this to go up to the next level. Um, and to do that, it's not overly difficult, but it's a lot of stuffing around and took a bit of trial and error. But basically we can do this using reporting parameters and overriding under certain situations. So if I put a dimension between my two levels and I'm going to make that a reporting parameter. You can see it's defaulted because I've gone level to level which are host elements so I can include it as a reporting parameter. And I'm going to call this the the level height just for the sake of a name. And I'm also going to put a reference plane, actually I might put it over here so you can see it, over here. And I'm going to put a dimension from there to the reference plane. And I'm going to add a new instance parameter and call it calc height, as in calculated height. And then I just need to modify these extrusions so they're no longer constrained to the level. Um, so I'm just going to use my align tool and align and lock to that reference plane and then align and lock to that reference plane. Okay. Um, now, if we go into our family types, you can see we've got our level height and our calculated height. I'm going to add another instance parameter, length, and call it defined height. Oh, actually, no, it won't. I'll call it nested height. Alright, and I'm just going to enter that is the same for the moment. And I'm also going to add a yes no parameter to define whether it, it's nested or not. Alright, and of course, I now want to put a conditional statement around these heights to define them. Um, and in order to do that, I need to OK the dialog box and go back because I can't add a parameter and put it in a formula in the same instance of the family types dialog box unless something's changed in 2012. Um, so if we put a, a rule on the calculated height, which is the one that's actually defining the column height, it says if my family is nested, then use the nested height otherwise use the level height. So if condition result if true result if false. Okay, you see that grays out. Um, and then we can go OK. Alright, so now let's load that into our project, oh sorry our family that we've nested it into. In my case I've just nested two in for example. I'm going to overwrite the existing version, switch to my front elevation. Alright, 
So I'm going to tell it that it's nested, which it is. And in here for the nested height, I'm going to put an extra dimension from this level to this level and add another reporting parameter that calls it level height. And then I can link this to match the level height. And similarly for this one. Okay. And then we can load it into the project. Right now, if we look at our section, you can see it's correctly constrained. Um, the dash lines there in the middle, that's just because I was lazy and I didn't bother constraining those, but obviously if I constrain those to the reference plane as well, they go all the way up. And there we have it. So the same sort of thing can be applied to structural framing, although it gets a, a lot trickier. Um, and this is just one of the things I'll be covering at the RTC. Thanks for your time.